Well, here we are again, back on the uh, Citroen C1 edition. <laughs> what we've got is this Citroen C1 and it's got a slipping clutch. Now, uh, going back to the previous video that we did, oh God, it was on the Ago, which had got the, uh, the broken clutch. And I showed you in that what it looks like when the clutch plate itself fractures and a piece of it got into the spring plate causing the clutch so you couldn't change gear, it wasn't disengaging properly. Now, this one is a completely different scenario, whereas the vehicle was driving along, going up the hill, the engine is revving, and the vehicle's slowing down. So the clutch is slipping, it's actually slipping, to the point where it was smoking, uh, and the lady driving it, she's, uh, yeah, she's saying, oh my goodness me, I'm, I'm gonna stop, and she actually did, she stopped on the hill. Um, and it wouldn't go anywhere. So you're putting it in gear, letting your foot off the clutch pedal, no drive at all, complete loss of drive. So I'm going to whip the clutch out of this and we're going to have a look at this plate and I'm going to show you what a worn clutch plate looks like and maybe we might have some scorching on the flywheel. A uh, little interesting one. So let me bang the gearbox out and, um, and we'll have a good look and I can show you what, what a worn clutch looks like rather than a broken clutch. After I've drank my tea. Let's crack on. Tapity tap tap. Oh, she goes. Wow, that was tight. <laughs> There she blows. I went with a bang that one. Holy crap. There we go, one out. Doodly doodly doodly. Holy smokes, that was tight. That one was tight, that was. <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> Wowzers. Now, in the other video, I showed how to get these bottom door joints off without a tool. Smack and uh, got it off. But uh, the tool is always easier. You saw how tight that one was. That was really tight. Double the spanner upon it. Oh, there she goes. Here we go. Oh, jingle, jingle, bloody jingle all the way. Oh, easy, that one. That one's banged off. No sweat at all, that one. Aha. Here we go. There it is. Just in there like that. That's all I want. Bingo, she's out. We're out, we clear. Yeah. There we go. Oh, there we go. Right. Righty, righty, righty. Let's get these draw shafts out, I think. That's the order of the day now. There's my trusty bar again. Let's just pop these shafts out of the... Uh, just get that behind, behind it and it should just pop out of there. Bingo. This gearbox must have been over full because um, the amount that's coming out of there and the engines it's only slightly jacked up and uh, before we start we noticed a little bit of oil residue on the bottom of the box these are really susceptible to um, oil leaks from the box if the oil level is just slightly too high and I think that's what's happened this has got way too much oil in it nice oh, so the drain bug on the gearbox is 24 millimeter, 
24 millimeter nut there. So let's whop that out of there. Let's get this oil out of this. Oh, it's be all day waiting for that to trickle out. There we go. Here we go. Get the show on the road. Let's whip that nut out of there. Bang girl, there we go, look. Get this out. Let's get it out of there. It's crappy gearbox oil this. Really dirty. It's done 70, I think it's 78,000 miles. And I reckon that's the original oil. It doesn't look like it's been changed. It's just dripped on me head. I knew that was gonna happen. You little stroke, yeah. Right on the back of my head. Ay, 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 you little ditch. Fancy putting your head in the line of fire. This boy's an amateur. He's an absolute novice. <laughs> oh dear. Got a nice aluminium washer on there, that should lock up nice and tight again. Get that up. There we go. Right. Happy days. Happy days. Let's get that out of the way. Woohoo! The reactions are razor sharp. Let's have that out of the way. Look at that. Horrible. Really dirty that. Oh, I nearly as dirty as my floor. The oil all over my floor. Oh, I have to wipe well up now. Because I ain't working on an oily floor. No way, Jose. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there's the pesky little shaft out of there now. Let's get that out of the way. One draw shaft out of the way. Woo! Lovely, lovely. Oh. Bit of open space now, it's looking good. It's looking really good. Let me get in there. Bit at a time. I need engine support. It's not gonna go far because the exhaust is there, but I do want something just to, I think just to take a bit of load off of that. I'll put my bar from the box, from the bottom of the sump, from the, uh, the box section on the pit jack to the other jack, just to counter-lever it all again. I think that's what I did last time. Then we can drop that off this mountain. Okay, let's get the strain on this. Get a bit of sump. Just see it bone, just taking the strain of the engine. I can whip the engine mountings off. With all the weight on the jack, the top engine. I've took the four bolts out of the out of this top engine mounting now, which is loose to the gearbox. So now I'm just going to pop out the bolts around the outside. We'll whiz those out of there and uh, and the starter motor bolt and happy days we should be uh, should be ready to come out you can see what we've taken out there got the battery trays out earth straps off the front there disconnected this tent the reverse light switch we've disconnected the oxygen sensor we've disconnected the um, we took the two two bolts out for the clutch um, cable mounting plate We've disconnected the clutch, uh, the um, gear selector cables off of here, just a little split pin, and uh, the spring off the clutch arm. So yeah, it's all good. It's looking good. Oh, let's whip the last of these mounting bolts out if we can. All of these big 17 millimeter bolts around the outside of the bell housing, these are the key to holding it all together. Right, so that's all the main ones out of there. Just got to take the plate off the back and the mounting off here and then they've got one 14 millimeter um, bolt into the back of the starter motor. There's one into the starter motor from the top and there's one into the starter motor from the back. There's only two bolts hold the starter onto the gearbox, which is great. We don't like many bolts. Less bolts to undo. Get this thing out of here. Right, right I'm going to show you this because this is really interesting stuff. When using an impact gun, you've got to have an impact, 
universal joint. Now this little snap-on beauty, it runs, <laughs> look at that, and it is, it's got so, you can put so much torque through it. It's amazing, it's really, really good. And you can't use a normal, if you use a normal uh, universal joint, it has, oh God, and flings off, puts you in the eye, or whatever. This one, it has a bit more stability, and you can actually set it to what position you want it to, to get started. Brilliant bit of kit. Worth every penny. Right, and so here we go, look, this is the big guns. I've got the big half inch universal joint. Half inch impact socket, deep. Straight onto there, and then straight into the gun. Let's try it on the first setting. I might have to turn it up a bit. I'm still running it on quite low, but let's see if that's going to work. Straight away. Straight away, that's moving. Let's have a look. Ugh. Woo! Oh, it's going weird. It's all going peak Tom. Right. Yeah, we can see, can't we? Can we get a good one? I've got you focused in on that. Here we go, let's put this out. The difference it makes just by changing and losing some of that, uh, you lose some of the torque through the extensions and everything. It makes a massive difference. I'm looking at this, we've actually got remnants of destroyed clutch plate material. Look at that, it's completely destroyed. It's like a bird's nest. Talk about fry clutch. I'm expecting to see some blue blue flywheel when we get this out. That's, uh, that's definitely got a hot on us. Straight rack and roll, here we go, something's happening. Okay, she's hanging, she's hanging. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, I see where it, drop it on his head. Drop it on his head and hurt ourselves. All right, take the strain. Let's have a look. Get hold of this. Can I get hold of this? Oh, she's tight. Oh, she's tight. Playing hard to get. Come on, you little git. Come on, baby. Just stuck on them spines slightly. Oh, that one's getting away on that. Come on, baby, Lou. You know you want to come out. Oh my god, why do I do this? Why do I do this? I need to get some more muscles. I can't remember having this much issue last time getting the thing out. It come out straight away. 
on, there we go. Seems really tight. There we go. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, touchdown. Yes. <laughs> well, that played hard to get, didn't it? Good lord. Whew, made me work for that, didn't it? Oh, let's get you up there a bit. Oh. I'm puffing and panting like an old pit pony. There it is. Go on, skanky old gearbox. Oh, let's have a look. See what we're left with. Right, let's get you down here, you can have a look at this. This is what's known as a bird's nest clutch. <laughs> so here we have the clutch plate assembler. And if you look inside here, you can just see how all of that material, all that plate material is disintegrated. It's got so hot and just created this mush and you wait till I get this plate out, it'll be uh, a sight to behold. So, I'll just quickly, those that don't know how a clutch works, this is your pressure plate, which is this bit you see with these fingers, these metal fingers on it. And as you press your clutch in, it forces a bearing, the release bearing, it forces it into this. And you see these, these marks around here? That's where this release bearing presses into that and it pushes these fingers back. And all these is like a cantilever. As it pushes these fingers back, it moves the metal plate behind here away from the flywheel wheel and lets the clutch slip. So that is all, it's really simple, really simple design. But yeah, that's what this does. That's, that's what its actual mechanical usages and you'll see as I'm releasing these bolts the fingers will move these fingers will be moving as I release these bolts as we go go around just turn the engine slightly so I can get these other bolts Last two. And for me, the other amazing thing is, this is getting a bit tedious now. The amazing thing is, all of the power of the engine, everything, all of the power, is driven through this. It's held on with these tiny little 12 millimeter bolts. There's what, is there one, two, three, four, five, six of them so these six these six tiny bolts is where all the power is transmitted from the engine through into the gearbox it's, it's unbelievable uh, and i suppose you could say the same for the splines these little splines in the clutch plate they're, they're not very big but yet all the power is transmitted through that it's unbelievable well i think it is a lot of people wouldn't A lot of people think I'm just talking absolute garbage. <laughs> yeah. Then what else would we talk about? We didn't talk about garbage. Right, so let's get the screw off behind here and just gently prise this off and we can see all the crap come out of here now. So I'm getting ready for a shower of manky clutch residue. Oh, can I get it out in one bit without it all 
going everywhere. Let's have a look. <laughs> Dare I turn it? Dare I turn it and get covered in crap? Yeah. Just get off that compression stroke. Right, okay, let's have a look at this last bit then. Here we go, here it comes. Here it comes, nearly there. It's just stuck on this last dowel. What you've got to bear in mind is, because this has been slipping, this has got red hot. It, this plate would have been glowing red, pff, the heat. So everything here is all out of sync, it's stretched, it's, it's moved. Um, and it's, it's really tight on these dowels. Here it comes, look, here it comes. Oh, with it, oh, last dowel, last one, right then. <laughs> here it is. Ugh. Right, let me tell you what, let me just put that there and I'll point the camera down at it. Let me spin it around. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so here it is. Look at the state of this. Oh my goodness me. I'm gonna lift that up, look. It's completely, it's completely stripped that side of the clutch with its material. You see this, this friction material that's on this side of the clutch? That would have been on that side, but it's completely destroyed. It's got that hot, it's just ripped it off its linings um, ripped it off the rivets lot and uh, gives you a good indication as, again as to how how little material is on, on these clutch plates as you can see the design of that you've got where the shaft the main shaft comes in from the gearbox there and it's spinning this so all of the drive of the car is going through these tiny little springs and then it's going through this flimsy flimsy metal here lot that's all it, all of the drive of the car is going through these tiny metal plates here. Look, I mean, look how thick they are. You're talking, well, well God, not even an, about an eighth. They're, they're uh, what, two millimeters? It's um, unbelievable, really, that you can get so much power through that to drive a car. But uh, it, it works well, you know, it's true, proven, tested, and all the rest of it. But you can see how worn out this is. It's right down to the rivets, right down to those rivets. Look, absolutely had it. And here is, here is the residue, the material that would have been on that plate, look. It's, it's all here. It's all just birds nested up, look. It's just all congealed and got trapped in this plate here. And this has got blue. You can see the, the wear on there. The rivets have taken the centre out of it. That's a really good example of a, a burnt out clutch. Reasons why it's happened. Well, uh, it's, it's an old lady drives this car. Um, and she's had knee surgery, so uh, I don't know. I, I I sort of have to suspect that she's probably been riding the clutch. She'd had a had a foot on the clutch pedal while she's been driving. If that's not the case, then a poorly adjusted clutch. On one of my other videos, we we say about the um, the clutch adjustment, and you've got to have a small amount of free play onto these springs from the bearing. So you've got to adjust that cable to, to, to get that little bit of free play. If you don't, and these are being pressed by that bearing, then it makes the clutch, it's almost like you've got your foot riding on it, you're pressing the clutch slightly, loses the pressure in the plate, causes it to slip. As soon as it gets hot, it'll just disintegrate like this one has. It just burn up. So, um, yeah, that's a really good example. Really pleased with that. Yeah, let's stick a new clutch in it. So we've got the comparison of the new and the old. Let's uh, open the box up. Oh god. Right. Let's have a look, see what we've got in here. So straight away <laughs> you can compare this this one with the new one. And you can see see the thickness of the material on that clutch plate there. You've got all this material here, and there's the old one. Look, it's got nothing at all. So that's what's that's what's missing. And you can see the side, that side there, how how worn down that one is as well. Um, 
I mean, there's not a massive amount of material on clutches, not really when you look at them. You think there to the rivet, you've only got about, I don't know, three or four millimeters before it hits that. But uh, it doesn't wear that much. They're, they're very slow wearing because there's a lot of surface area. You've got an awful lot of surface area pressing on there. Whereas a brake pad is a lot smaller. This has got a big surface area to, uh, to wear against. So always the, the bit that protrudes, the sticky outside, goes into the plate, goes inwards like that. The flat side bolts against the flywheel. Now we need his alignment tool, so let's go and find that. So I've got my little alignment tool just out of a piece of 15 mil copper pipe and I've just taped a bit of insulation tape round. So the end one fits perfectly there into that spigot there, like that. And then the second plate then, which will go over the top of that, sits within that one there. I'll just push that in a bit more. So we know that that is dead smack bang in the middle. And as long as that's sitting straight there, we put the plate, the pressure plate on the top of that. We know it's all lining up. I'm just going to sit on those dowels nicely. Like that. And then we'll get these little 12mm bolts and we're just going to put these in and do them up in succession. So when we're doing these up, we're going to do them on opposites. So we just nip this side, that side, that side, that side and just keep working round to avoid any clutch judder. We just make sure we've got these all in nicely. All evenly bolted. And again, you'll see the fingers closing up as we, uh, as we wind these in and it squeezes the spring up. So these are all down to the base and they're all we just whack them up not mega tight and i'll go over the top Good enough for me. And then we'll pull that little alignment tool out. Done its job. Moment of truth is obviously when we put the, the gearbox in and that spline has got to go through the centre and it's got to be dead in line, which it should now be. Whew. Next bit is a clutch release bearing. You can see that there, moves up and down. This is the bearing that actually rotates there. We've got a nice, a nice new one here. Put the bag up there. Yeah, lovely, 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 lovely. So let's pull that forward and slide that up and over. And they've got little little pins that lock into that there so we'll get them i'll put a bit of grease on that to start with i think we'll just get that a little clean slide this new bearing on and get those get those little lugs there clip in that one and the same with the bottom one like that and then we just push the arm up and move it across a little bit and there we go she's in working nicely and that's uh, beautiful We're ready for reinstallation. I'll just get rid of a bit of that crap in there so I don't get it all over my face when I lift the box up with the new one. Not looking forward to it, but it's got to go back in. Am I feeling strong? No, not really. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a nightmare. Oh dear. 
Oh dear, dear, here we go. Can we get this sucker back in its hole? Here we go. <laughs> oh, I hate this. Why is it getting caught? happen that's dropped Well, these things are hard on your own. 
<laughs> they are they are tricky on your own. Just can't get that located up on its spline somewhere. That mountain's getting in the way again. That's catching up on that. What the heck it is? Give me a lot of grief. I should have took it off. Quick look. There. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, that was epic! That was epic! I'm worn out. I need to sit down and a cup of tea and a coffee and a cake and a. Oh, you're beautiful. Bellhousing bolts come back up again. Got that one there. And one down the bottom. And one on the top. Right. We'll get that starter motor back done up again. We can get this bar out of the way, we don't need that anymore. Hallelujah. That's better. Oh, I've got a bit more space again. Oops, a daisy. Sorry about that. I'm bashing you. Uh, oh, that's a bit more room. Look. Now we can whack up these last few, few bolts around here. Three. That's the plate back on the back. That's now tight. The one above it we did from the top, so that one should be good. Yep. Okay. Woohoo, we're getting there. Alright, we can put this bottom mounting bracket back in again. That's that one on. And then that one. That's that one on. Woohoo! Oh, now we're rocking and rolling. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Oh. Now we're getting somewhere. The O2 sensor. Speaking of which, this ugly little shin bag can go back in the hole. Let's get that back in there. Careful not to twist up the wires. that back in again, we'll pop that back in there, get that back in its connector plug. I'm going to pop the filler bung out just so I don't forget to put some oil in the gearbox. So if I take it out now while I think about it, then leave it on the side. I know I'm not going to, and the filler for the gearbox is that little fella there, look. So we take that out and you fill that until it comes out of that hole. Once it comes out of there, you know you're up to level. Like I say, don't overfill these because it will leak. It'll come straight out your dry shaft seals. Let's get this dry shaft back round again. Now these tricky little gits to get back in again. They can be a pain. And we're gonna have to give it a bash with the ammo to get it back in. You know how tight they were coming out, it can be a Similar experience getting them back in again. But we're hoping, hoping it's gonna do it. It's gonna be nice to us and drop straight back in. 
Let's get the hammer and the rubber mallet and we'll just tap that on that. Oh, oh, you little GM. She's gone straight back in now, Orbit. That's lovely. Lovely. That's one of them. And we can locate the get this ball joint back in its holder with the, the bar. Bend that arm down. Bend the arm down. Oh, you little bugger. Don't slip on me. In you go. Nice and easy. And we'll get that castle nut back on the top. I think I should do it. I should get a pin through that one. That's one done. Ooh. Ooh, let's get that, that last bit in. It's nearly there. It's nearly there. Just a tiny little tap. And a little tap on there should do it. Yes. Yes, in you go, you little skunk bag. What a little toe rag that is. Right up to the maker's name. Oh, they look beautiful. Absolutely. Right. Castle not two. Right, get them pins in there. Yeah, we have the ton of Ralston, the ton, the tub of Ralston split pins. Good crappy Chinese rubbish lot, but these will do the job. Great stuff, let's have a look, see what we've got. Couple of them, one on this side, and with a bit of luck that should be lined up and get that through the hole. Yeah, look at that straight through, no problem at all. There's my pie, it's gone. Let's bend that round. Get that over the top. There we go, that ain't going nowhere. That's one. One for the other side. I just gotta find the uh, find the hole. She cried. Oh, yeah, there it is. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, it's playing hard to get. Come on, you little skunk, get through there. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's because that nut's a bit battered on the other side. It's a, been a bit battered, it has. Come on, you little, little tinker. Through you come. Here it is, look. Here it comes, yeah, gotcha. Brilliant. Gee, I've done it. Right, let's get back upstairs and do some work up there. We can get the wheels back on and get it off the pit jack, which is not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Right, let's finish off up top. Right, let's get this finished off. We should be able to get the um, uh, selector cables back in. Right, that's them on. The clutch spring. Lovely. That's the clutch cable back in. All nicely adjusted up. And uh, we've, got us, we've got us free play in the arm. So we've got, we can grab the arm and just move it back as it forwards a little bit. Battery tray going back in.
wonderful. Just got to get some gearbox oil in there now and, uh, and we're all sorted. Great job. So I've got the gearbox oil ready to go back in and this is the EP75W80 um, gear oil. So yeah, that's what we've got to put back in the box. Takes about 1.7 litres according to the stats on it. Um, the hardest thing is getting it back in again because you get the tube with the bottle but you can't physically tip it in unless you put a pipe you could feed a pipe up from the the hole in the front of the gearbox up to the top here that's one way of doing it i've got my my pump tool so i'm going to use that i'm just going to suck it out of the bottle and pump it straight in with that it's a tricky one though it's quite hard to get get it in the hole right there she is yes yeah, perfect look at that like i say 1.7 and it's there it is there Hallelujah. Great news. And we've got the 24mm bung just to pop back in the hole. There we go. Ooh, gearbox all changed. Oh, so there we go. C1 clutch all finished. Mm, beautiful. Interesting one that. Really enjoyed doing it to be fair. Um, had some tricky moments getting that gearbox in and out. And I think it was my own fault. I tried to cut a corner really by not removing the top mounting from the inner wing. I left it in place thinking that when I dropped the engine down I'd have enough. But it was just catching on things when I was shifting it about. And also the, uh, the pit jack. Uh, it's an old pit jack, bless it. And it does lose a little bit of pressure over an hour or two sometimes. And I think that again made a difference because it, it dropped, which lifted the engine back into the bay. So it, it lost its sag and made it difficult to get it out. And I'm there like a uh, trying to get, yeah. Not my best moment, but um, oh, well, never mind, eh? Live and learn, live and learn. And I like to try new things. I always like to try, can I get away with taking this off? Can I do it this way? Just tweak things a little bit, make it a bit different, makes it more interesting. Um, what else did we have going on there? Well, that clutch plate, that was a, a really good example of a completely spaz clutch. I mean, it was unbelievable. It was like a, a load of mush in there. And you can just see the difference. A worn clutch, worn out normally, is dusty. There's loads of dust, very, very fine, horrible fine dust, like brake dust. But this one, you just knew it had overheated because of how it uh, turned into that. Oh, pardon me, that's my coffee. It turned into that wiry, bird's nesty kind of material and just scattered itself into all the orifices. Oh, that's a good word. <laughs> so, um, thanks for sticking with me to the end. Uh, the car drove beautiful, absolutely lovely. What a cracking job. Um, and let's wait for the next one. Give me a thumbs up if you've liked it. Um, if you've got any comments, drop me a comment. Um, subscribe if you feel like it. Thanks for watching.